Okay, so we've talked about enthalpy as being heat and heat changes. So we're going to talk now and relate this more to chemistry and particularly reactions. The enthalpy of a reaction, okay, or the change in enthalpy, is the enthalpy of the products, meaning the heat energy that the products contain, minus the enthalpy of the reactants, minus the heat energy that those reactants contain. Looking at a delta H, products, you can think of that as being the final. So the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactions. We're going to look at a lot of energy diagrams like this. We should get used to this energy or enthalpy on the Y and looking at the relationship, the relative positions of reactants and products. If we look at this reaction of methane and oxygen producing or combusting to form carbon dioxide and water, liquid water, we can see that th that reaction is going to release, it's a negative enthalpy, so it's exothermic release of heat, it's going to release 890 kilojoules per mole of methane. It's going to release 890 kilojoules per two moles of oxygen that react it's going to release that 890 kilojoules for every one mole of carbon dioxide formed and for every two moles of water formed. Now the interesting thing to note is we can look at this reaction backwards. Now the carbon dioxide and water are going to be the reactants and I'm going to be producing methane and oxygen. It will take 890 kilojoules of heat energy being put into the system to raise these lower energy more stable products to make these be the reactants and produce products that are at a higher energy level. So this would be the endothermic change. Interesting to note the quantity of heat is the same 890 kilojoules just the sign changes between the two. So the enthalpy of a reverse reaction is the same quantity of heat as the forward reaction, just with the opposite sign. So the quantity delta H is called the enthalpy of reaction, also known as the heat of reaction. If that enthalpy is less than zero, meaning it's negative, it's an exothermic reaction. If the enthalpy change is positive, it's an endothermic reaction. Here is something that's um, a little confusing. We talk about standard enthalpy changes, and these are enthalpy changes that occur at standard conditions. These are values that are tabulated in literature. Okay, so it's experimental results in literature conducted under what's called standard conditions. These are different than the gas standard conditions. I know in gas laws we talked about STP being 0 degrees Celsius, 1 atmosphere. Unfortunately, with enthalpy changes, the standard temperature is 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. I know it's different just the way it is. Pressure, 100 kilopascals, 1 atmosphere. Anything that is in solution has a concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed or one molar. One mole per decimeter cubed is the same thing as one mole per one liter, which is molarity. All substances are in their standard states. Oh. Hang on while I show you an example of what those tabulated values would look like. This is directly out of your IB uh, reference book, chemistry data booklet. Um, it's called thermodynamic data. Right here you see the delta H's. Um, and here they, they tell you the state that different things are in and what their delta H of formation. I know there's two other columns. We'll get to those in the second part of energetics. Okay, but to show you that these tables do exist and you will be using them. Okay. 
let's look at just two kind of fun videos. Um, oops, there's Dave showing things blowing up. By all means, fast forward if this doesn't interest you, but it's kind of cool. They melt the car. that from a chemistry standpoint, the thermite prior to them reacting it was definitely at a more unstable state. The products of combustion, those things that, that, that were the product, are at a much more stable, lower energy state, as you can tell by the amount of energy released. Here's something, nitrogen triiodide, that is incredibly unstable um, and and reacts pretty violently to form its stable products. It's lower its products at the lower energy state. Nitrogen triiodide, the dark colored solid, is dry. It is very sensitive to touch or any vibration. Simply touching it with the feather causes it to explode or detonate. One detonation causes another to occur. One product of the reaction is violet iodine vapor. And no, we're not going to do that in, in class. Sorry. Okay, so determining the sign of delta H or the change in enthalpy. Indicate the sign of the enthalpy change delta H in each of the following processes carried out under atmospheric pressure and indicate whether the process is endothermic or exothermic. Pause the screencast, please, and answer these on your own, and then I'll work through the problem as well. Okay, hopefully you did pause to take a moment and, and think about this. An ice cube melting. An ice cube melting starts off as the ice or solid phase of water. Then it melts, becomes liquid. As we know, liquids are at a higher energy state than the solid form. Our energy is this way. I have trouble writing sideways. And to go from that solid to the liquid, I had to increase the energy of the system. That energy had to come from somewhere. It came from the surroundings. My delta H then is positive, indicating an endothermic change. This is for my melting. B. Anything that's combusted releases energy. That's all those explosions that everybody always wants me to do in class. Releasing of heat and light. So if I were to look at my reactants, I have my butane. I have oxygen at a certain level. Then I have carbon dioxide and water. This is not balanced energy goes out of the system so that my reactants are at a lower, more stable energy state. 
This, of course, would indicate that the change in enthalpy is negative or an exothermic change. Uh, it feels wrong for me not to balance this, so this would be a 4, this would be a 5, that's 8, and 5 is 13. 13 halves would then balance it. Okay? This question we're going to look at in class. Let's consider the combustion of methane and work through this problem. I have methane, one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen, forming carbon dioxide and liquid. Oh! liquid water and it tells me that the change in enthalpy is a negative indicating it's exothermic a release of heat 890 kilojoules per mole what is the change in enthalpy of the reverse reaction well I know that the change the reverse reaction is going to be the same number so it's 890 kilojoules per mole but the reverse is going to have an opposite sign. So if it's an exothermic reaction in the forward direction, it's going to be endothermic in the reverse. If water were in the gas phase, what would happen to the change in enthalpy? Well, probably when this reaction first happens, you know, water is probably in the gas phase as it hits that cooler air, it condenses and becomes the liquid water. So if it were to stay in the gas phase, it, the system would not release that energy. So to go from the liquid water, oh, that's a two, to gas, that takes energy, right? Because liquid water is a lower energy state, gas is a higher. The delta H for this would be positive. So that means if it would have stayed in that gas phase, the system would be at a higher energy level. Therefore, the change in enthalpy for the reaction would be less negative, meaning it wouldn't release as much heat because it keeps it to keep that water in the gas phase. I like to put in words like less negative because I think it's clear what you're saying. And a random note this will come up later. I think I threw it in here just to get it in there at some point. Some energy may be necessary to get a reaction initiated even if the reaction is spontaneous. So even in this, I can have methane existing with oxygen and it'll, it'll stay in that state for a very long time. I light a match, poof, I get an explosion. That energy from that match is enough to make that reaction go to completion, to be spontaneous. Okay, so that energy from the match doesn't really like count. The reaction is still considered spontaneous if it goes to completion. Okay, so let's, let's relate this delta H, this change in enthalpy, to quantities of reactants and products. And if we look at this equation again, we've got the methane, oxygen making carbon dioxide and water and I have a delta H of negative 890 kilojoules per mole. I want to know how much heat is released when I have 4.50 grams of methane. Well I know that I release 890 kilojoules per mole for every one mole of methane. So now I just have to relate that one mole to whatever these moles are in this 450 grams of methane. So 4.50 grams of methane times grams of methane in one mole of methane. Just our um, molar mass 16.04 times for every one mole of CH4 I'm going to release 
890 kilojoules. So doing the math on the calculator, 4.5 divided by 16.04 times 890, I would get a release of 250 kilojoules. If they had given me a mass of oxygen, so say it was, okay, uh, 6.00 grams of O2, how much heat would be released? 6.002 grams of O2 times 32.00 grams of O2 in one mole of O2 times for every two moles of O2, I release 890 kilojoules. Okay. This is from that number. I wanted to show that just so you don't think it's always per one mole. It is for this equation as written. If a substance in the equation has a coefficient, it's the coefficient that goes in that relationship in your dimensional analysis program. Okay. And that ends the screencast.